Over the last few weeks, we've seen a whole stack of brand new Z790 motherboards popping up, which can only mean one thing, that this video has got a sponsor. This video is brought to you by VIPSEDKey.com. You've just built your brand new PC and you've spent all your cash on bling bling and RGB. You install Windows and you see the watermark of death. You spent all that money on your hardware and you still need to spend a couple hundred more on an activation key as well and you won't have enough money to feed your cat this week. Can't buy your food this week because I had to spend all the money. Wrong. You don't need to fork out a couple hundred dollars for a key and you can also still feed your cat. You can grab one from today's video sponsor. From VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price and you can use our code GEAR to get 25% off. How good's that? That takes that already cheap Windows key and makes it even cheaper. You place your order. Bingo bango, you've got your key on your orders page, you chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR for 25% off, link in the description. On with the video. In all seriousness though, we're checking out a brand new board from Gigabyte. It's the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite X Wi-Fi 7 and it's got a few really nice quality of life updates which I'm gonna show you guys. The reason why we're covering this is because when we do motherboard videos, they're not reviews. They're overviews so we can take a look at all of the new stuff on here and what comes in the box. One thing I've got to say from the jump before we even dive into this is motherboards have less and less in the box because a lot more stuff is on the board now. You're about to see exactly what I mean. Let's take a look at this new board from Gigabyte. You might be pleasantly surprised. All right, here it is, ladies and gents, the brand new Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite X Wi-Fi 7. Let's get that motherboard out of the box so we can take a little bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this brand new motherboard. And as mentioned already, there's just not a lot going on with motherboards these days. There's so much integrated onto these boards that a lot of the stuff just isn't included anymore and I'm okay with that. First up, we've got a SATA or SATA cable. Well, there's a pair of them. That's for your 2.5 inch SSDs or those spinning rush drives. Then we've got this here. This is for the M.2 slot. So in case you remove a drive and replace a the drive, then you've got a spare on hand just in case. There's also the antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth. Yes, this motherboard does feature Wi-Fi 7. Pretty cool, we'll be seeing more of these coming up in the future. There's also this little G connector. Now this allows you to plug all your front panel wiring into a single block to plug into your board for easy installation. And lastly is this bit of documentation showing us all of the new X models coming out for Z790 in the future. Okay, let's get this new board unsheathed so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that makes this board tick. There's a lot of cool quality of life stuff going on here. Okay. First of all, we've got the front panel audio header. There's two three pin five volt addressable RGB headers for your lights and everything if you want that bling bling. There's also a four pin addressable RGB header. There's a TPM header, two USB 2.0 headers for things like liquid cools and RGB controllers. There's a Q flash button for updating your BIOS, four PWM fan headers for fans and there's the front panel connector for your lights and your switch just lets you know your system's up and running and to turn it on. There's also a surface mounted reset button, six SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or those spinning rust drives. There's a bunch of Thunderbolt headers as well in case you've got a Thunderbolt add-in card. I'm not quite sure if it's got that integrated. There's also this postcode LED array which allow you to diagnose your system, a USB type C front panel header, a USB 3.2 front panel header and then a 24 pin power connector to power up this motherboard in your system, right? That's what you need. Everyone needs a 24 pin power connector. There's also another three pin five volt addressable RGB header, two more PWM fan headers, one's for CPU fan and one CPU opts for like liquid cooler pumps and whatnot, and two eight pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your CPU. Now, if we take a look at the PCIe slots on this board, there's three full-size PCIe slots. The top one is a PCIe 5.0 by 16 slot and the other are PCIe Gen 4 by 4 slots in a 4 by 16 size. Something I thought was worth mentioning is the top PCIe slot now has metal reinforcements for those saggy old GPUs. As far as the VRM, this features a 16 plus 1 plus 2 phase digital twin VRM setup. You can see the heat sinks are absolutely huge on this board. There's one across the top and then one where the IO cover is and there's a heat pipe connecting both of them together. Now, this features 
a standard LGA 1700 socket for 12th and 13th gen CPUs. Also, you'll notice another quality of life thing here. The retention arm has a flat edge on it to help push it down. It makes it a bit easier. And if we take a look at that LGA 1700 socket, nothing particularly fancy going on here. Just a regular old LGA 1700 socket. But if we flip the board over, you will notice something new. Now, usually it's pretty boring back here. But behind the top PCIe slot, you'll notice there is extra reinforcement to help with GPU sagging and rigidity. For memory compatibility, this is where it gets interesting as well. Four DDR5 RAM slots, up to 192 gigs of RAM at 8266 mega transfers. That's some fast memory. This is the most interesting feature of the board. There's completely toolless M.2 installation now. There's no screwdriver required whatsoever. It's got these retention clips. These are like heavy duty spring loaded retention clips that hold the heat sinks in place and you can just lift them away and they kind of are just held in place. It's, it's actually really nice. There's four PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots on this board. So plenty of potential with storage and to mount all M.2s on this board, it has those spring loaded retention clips as well. So no need for any screws whatsoever. For rear I.O., we've got four USB type A ports, two antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth. There's a display port and there's also HDMI. There's USB type C, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. And if I'm going to be pedantic about this, that audio interface with optical output and mic and line out. Gigabyte's been removing quite a lot with their audio interfaces as of late. Okay, there's also an integrated IO shield, but let's take a look at the board with some B-roll. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this first look at this new board from Gigabyte. Now, as I probably spoke about in the voiceover during the video, there's a nice selection of quality of life changes that I personally think should trickle down to every motherboard, not just Gigabyte boards, but all motherboards, especially toolless M.2 installation. Now we've had toolless M.2 installation for a couple years now, not to the point where even the heat sinks are toolless. That's really, really cool. I love that. It just clips in. It. I wasn't even looking at the thing doing it. Not only that, there's a few other things like on the back side of the board, we saw that there's extra support for the top PCIe slot. And there's a shield around the top PCIe slot to add some rigidity, especially for those newer 40 series GPUs that have all of the sagginess going on. So that will help with making the structure of the slot itself a lot more rigid. This is something I really like to see. And the fact they're using a backplate for that as well is cool. And like I said, I really hope these things on this board we're gonna be seeing from everybody because this stuff to me is kind of important. One other thing I noticed as well, the socket itself, the edge of the socket has been beefed up a little bit as well, meaning that the retention system is the same. So installing the CPU is the same, but the actual frame is slightly larger. I did kind of eyeball this and said, hey, this looks a bit different. And then I popped open the socket on the Elite AX. Overall, this is looking like a pretty interesting direction for these new boards. Obviously, I can't really say too much about anything else, but I think it's pretty obvious what these motherboards are for, but I'm not saying that because I didn't say anything, but it's obvious. As far as pricing and availability for these boards, I have no idea. 
but I was given the go-ahead from Gigabyte to allow me to show you this board because they did a whole bunch of social media posts. The product pages are up for everything as well, but they're not saying what it's for. Anywho, if you like this first look, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you think of all of these new little additions to the board. Like I said, this is the right direction for motherboards. There are other things on this board that I find a bit odd, like Gigabyte for the last year and a half have been reducing their audio interfaces, so there's less, but what, 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 what am I gonna say that's gonna change that? Absolutely nothing. Anyway, if you like the video and you like the music and all that stuff, I make the music, click the join button if you want it. Subscribe, like, share the video if you can. We really appreciate all you guys very much. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. You motherboard's coming. Got a lot of other boards that are coming as well. You're gonna see a lot of this stuff again. You guys love motherboard videos. I like making them. Thanks for watching.